Hello, good morning to all of you in CCF Center. This is Big C Chats and I'm Roy Felipe from CCF Feliz. How are you? Ask yourself or ask a neighbor, ask a friend beside you. How are you? Our usual response is, I'm okay. But you know what? Deep down inside, a lot of us are not okay. We can be okay externally. But you know, internally, we're not really doing well. I remember last January, Josh McDowell in IDC, Intentional Discipleship Conference, you know what he said? The pandemic has magnified our anxieties. But it does not mean, according to Josh McDowell, that the anxieties were not there before the pandemic. Are you getting my point? The anxieties are there. But because of this pandemic, our anxieties are magnified. They come out into the surface. And all of us, I'm sure all of us during this pandemic are experiencing some form of anxiety which has been there all the time. The, the, uh, let's, let's check ourselves, reality check. Are you anxious right now? Are you worried? You know what? Our number one worry is only about one thing. You know what it's about? It's about the future. Tomorrow. What's going to happen tomorrow? What about next week, next month? Will I still have a job? Will my business collapse? Will it succeed? Will I get sick? Will I get COVID? You know, a few months ago, especially during the prayer and fasting week, I suddenly felt very weak and I had a sore throat. And after one week, it was still there. And I had to go get a swab test. And I was worried that I might have contracted COVID. And some of us are like that. Will I get sick? Will I be, uh, will I stay in the hospital? How will I pay the bills? These are part of our worries, our anxieties, because we're worried about what? The future. What's going to happen next? And then we ask, will I be healed? Will the Lord listen to my prayer? If I get sick, will it be painful? Will I get what? Intubated. Intubated. You know, my wife and I agreed many years ago that if we get into the hospital, into the ICU, we agreed with each other. No uh, medical intervention. If it's our time, it's our time. We don't want to get intubated and to be put on a heart and lung machine that will make our bodies uh, beep uh, and, uh, and uh, make our bodies live longer than it's usual. No medical intervention. Do not resuscitate. Perhaps some of you are thinking like that. Can we find joy in desperate times? I remember Michael Ramsden, also last IDC, gave a talk. Can we find joy in desperate times? Therefore, I have entitled this, borrowing that phrase from Michael Ramsden, Finding Joy in Desperate Times. Are these desperate times? You know, our problem is some of us, or many of us, have gotten used to this pandemic. And we are coasting along. But there is no more joy because the, the new normal has, has uh, uh, limited our, our movement, the activities. So, how do we find joy in desperate times when we are facing worry and anxiety? I'd like us to listen to a testimony by a sister of ours. Her name is Rara, Barbara Membrere. And I'd like us to just listen to her uh, journey with the Lord, especially these past few months. Let's listen to Rara. One question that God struck to me years ago was, what was the worst two minutes of her life? Without any doubt, my answer was, when my mom was diagnosed with a big C, myeloma, cancer of the bone marrow. I just remember the time that I was so engrossed to research about her condition. Thus, in the midst of those moments, I even asked the Lord, where will this sickness of mama come to an end? Or how many years she will be battling with this? One friend even asked me, what if the Lord will not heal your mom? Does your faith 
would be tested or not. Countless of anxieties came into my system because the chemo injection was very expensive. I didn't even know the time when to get funds, but you know what, until today, I cannot imagine how the Lord provided from day one up to the last breath of my mom. Last December 21, my brother and I rushed my mom to the ER because her sodium went down abruptly and she was not even aware that she was in the ER until the next day when we were finally able to get a room. She stayed in the hospital from December 21 to 26 due to pneumonia. I spent two days in the PUI section with her with all the PPE even while I was sleeping. But again, the Lord sustained me and I easily adjusted for the love of Mama. Obviously, we spent Christmas in the hospital and I just sense that will be my last Christmas with her. She recovered well, but after four days, she had on and off fever again. December 30 came, her hematologist advised that we need to bring her again to the ER. After five days in the hospital, I got so anxious that I didn't see any progress with my mom due to pneumonia again. Even her hematologist talked to me that compared to her first admission, this is more complicated and critical. It was so timely as that was our prayer and fasting week. I remembered I received a lot of text prayers from our D group for Mama to recover soon. But to be honest with you, in my mind and half of my heart, I was really telling Jesus, if it's really your will for Mama to get well, do it now, Lord. But if it's not, please, Lord, do not prolong her agony. My disciple even talked to me to be ready after my mom's hematologist gave me her assessment about my mom's critical condition. But during that time, I was still begging for a miracle healing. After 16 days in the hospital, Mama's hematologist talked to us again and said that we needed to be prepared for the worst scenario. She helped us process the situation with so much courage and determination. That particular day, I was so hesitant to go home to rest and let my brother watch over Mama. But I really needed the rest and went home. It would be Mama's last night. It is so hard to write this testimony because this event is still so fresh in me. My disciple said, how are you going to be ready to let go of your loved one? Pointing out that for 44 years, I just live literally only with my mom. In every step of the way, only I and my mom face life's challenges together for better or for worse. My father had left us many years before, and my brother had his own family. How do I surrender to the Lord, the love of your life? My greatest gift, my mom. The next morning, my brother messaged me that mama had to be transferred to the ICU because she had sepsis already and had to be intubated. I rushed back to the hospital with the youngest sibling of our mama. My disciple said, Dra, the Lord will prompt you when to let go of your mom. With courage of heart, I went to mama, then I stepped backward again. But with open arms, I felt God's timing for me to let go of mama. I asked mama to embrace Jesus and fix her eyes on Jesus. I even asked the Lord to welcome Mama into His beautiful kingdom. When my mom got tears flowing down on her cheeks, it was an assurance that she heard me and asked forgiveness for my dad, and I even said that my dad loves her. My brother's message was terribly touching and so selfless. He said, Ma, rest now. 
Don't worry. I promise you, I will take care of Ate. The youngest sibling of my mom was there also. And I know that until now, she got so affected because she saw the last breath of my mom. When her hematologist arrived inside the room when mama passed away already, we didn't even care about COVID and we just hugged each other so tight. And she even said that our relationship will not end there, that she will be there always for me and my brother. My dear friends, in my eulogy, I said the best of the best words for my mom. The hospital days of mama was the best season of my life. I had traumas, countless anxieties, worries, imperfections, name it all. But during those days that I completely felt and experienced how Jesus moved in a very sweet and loving way that I cannot even imagine. Countless financial givers, constant prayer warriors, love from people whom the Lord sent during those trying times were all worth it. I even, I never imagined how to let go of someone who became your world for 44 years. I just said, Tito Roy and Tita Sasa, that before I made this testimony, I didn't know that there's such a thing as joyful grieving. That I know fully in my heart that Mama is now in a very beautiful place where there is no pain, no chemo, no brokenness, but only the best of everything. And the perfect feeling that Jesus has now healed her completely. She didn't gain the miracle healing on earth, but in heaven, she's now enjoying it. I don't know if I'm still on the stage of in denial that mama is not with me anymore, or it's simply recognizing that I am not okay emotionally, but because Jesus is carrying me through, I can boldly say that I, I am okay because his grace is very sufficient and I will be forever grateful that Jesus loves me more than my mom loved me so dearly. With that, my friends, my brokenness, anxiousness, all the negative emotions, name it all, will be gone soon, little by little. Because we have a big God who will be with us 100% moment by moment. To Jesus, the glory whose name I praise, the giver of my strength, my everything. Thank you. Rara said, she had difficulty letting her mom go, but the doctor talked to her and she prayed to the Lord, Lord, I'm letting my mom go. And Helen, Rara's mother, passed on. And it resulted, of course, there's grieving. But remember what Rara said when she was finally able to let go in the middle of anxiety, of worry, over grief. She said it was joyful grieving. What a paradox. Joyful grieving. Nagluluksa pero masaya. How do we come to that situation? Look at Psalm 138 verse 3. In the day when I cried, Lord, you answered me and strengthened me. When we are in deep trouble, you know what? We need to express ourselves to the Lord. We need to cry out to Him and He will answer us just like the answer of the Lord to Rara. Joyful grieving. Let me give you just a short acronym for today's message. I call it TNXX. Thanks. When we say thank you, when we text, we say TNX. Thanks. So I added another X, T-N-X-S. It, 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 it stands for T, thank the Lord. N, need of a neighbor. X, expect an answer. And another X, exercise. Okay, let me go through that with you. T-N-X-X, how do we find joy in desperate times? T, 
TNXX. Thanks. Number one, thank the Lord. Have a grateful heart. You know what? Many times we are so focused on our problems, we forget our history with the Lord. We thank the Lord for being a loving God. We thank the Lord for our salvation. We thank the Lord for this morning, for waking up this morning. We thank the Lord for being all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present. Wherever He is, wherever you are, He is there. We thank the Lord for the past blessings. Do you have memorial stones with the Lord? Do you have events in your life where you knew that it was the Lord speaking to you? You knew it was the Lord answering your prayer. Did you write it down? Do you tell your family about it? My wife have this uh, tradition. We keep on telling our children our history with the Lord, how He saved us. How, we in, how He brought us to a Bible study, how we invited Him, how we, we had this assurance from His Holy Spirit that the Lord is with us, how He helped us in problem after problem. Make that history. Go through that history and say, Thank you, Lord, for the past, for your past blessings. And then you thank the Lord for today. Because today is another blessing. You woke up this morning, you have family, you ate breakfast. If you're sick, thank the Lord that you have a doctor. Thank the Lord that you have been able to go to the hospital. You were able to get those lab, uh, 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 those lab procedures. So I ask you today, right now, ask yourself, what can you thank the Lord for? I'm sure there's a lot. Look at Psalm 9 verse 1. The psalmist says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Do we tell people, the, our friends, the wonderful deeds of the Lord yesterday, today, and tomorrow? Thank the Lord. Now, let me just give you some uh, quotes on anxiety. You know why we need to thank the Lord? Seek a friend in need. Be a blessing to somebody else. Rather than focusing on my problems, I will now look for somebody who has a problem and I will be a blessing. I will try to help that friend, that neighbor. Look for the need of a neighbor. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. The Apostle Paul tells us, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Encourage one another. Be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Encourage one another. Some people around us are depressed, are anxious, are worried. Rather than focusing on our own worries, I will encourage, I will give a word of advice, I will share the gospel to them that there is something much better than our problems today. Look at Galatians 5.13, serve one another humbly in love serve send a hot dog a hamburger a, a bucket of chicken to somebody who doesn't have enough food be a blessing and look john 15 5 if you remain in me and i in you you will bear what much fruit apart from me you can do nothing jesus says this is jesus speaking if you remain in me and i in you you will bear much fruit fruit. And what is that fruit? Joy. One of those fruits is joy. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. But Jesus tells us there is a requisite. How can we find joy in these desperate times? The Lord says, remain in me and I in you. Are we in the Lord? Is the Lord in us? If you have never Ask the Lord to come into your life so that He can be with you. May I challenge you right now. Today is a wonderful opportunity so that the Lord will be with you in your life, in your heart, in your thoughts. I'd like to ask you, would you like to receive the Lord in your life? Pray this with me. It's a very short prayer so that the Lord will be with us, so that we can bear much 
fruit joy in these difficult times. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who paid the price of my sins. Lord, I admit I'm a sinner, and I cannot pay for my sins. Thank you, Jesus Christ, that you died on that cross to pay for my sins so that I can avail of your forgiveness. And Lord, I humble myself right now. Forgive me, Lord. I know all the bad things I've done. I repent of all of this. And I humbly ask you, forgive me, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. I want to be a new person. I want to be the person that you want me to be. I accept you into my heart, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Amen. You know, Jesus promised, and you can claim this. What did he say in John 15, 5? If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. And one of those fruits that Jesus will bear, that you can have in your life, is joy in these desperate, difficult times. Because Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. You know what? Let me tell you a very short story. For many years, we had this neighbor, the house right in front of us. And for many years, it was just hi, hello, and goodbye. We'd see each other and make, make cuento. But you know what? I never took the opportunity to share the gospel with them. And then one day, one of the daughters, who was already in Australia, messaged us that the father, our neighbor across the street, had cancer. And I was so convicted by the Lord. He's been your neighbor for so long. And now is my only opportunity to share the gospel with my neighbors. So one day, I called him up. Can I go there? I would like to pray for you. And he said, of course. So I went there. I shared the gospel with the husband and the wife. I prayed for them. They received the Lord. And guess what? After one week, he died. Because after one week, I called them up again. I wanted to spend another time reading the Bible with them. And the wife said, he's in the hospital. The next day, he died. Take that opportunity. Cross the street. The need of a neighbor. TNX. Thank the Lord. Look for that need of a neighbor. X. Expect a breakthrough. A miracle. You remember? The father had left them. When the mother got sick. And then in December and January. When the mother, Helen, was in her last days. The father who had left them years before, came to visit and asked forgiveness. Perhaps we're looking for a physical restoration, but actually God wants a breakthrough in relationship restoration. Is there somebody in your life that we need a restoration of? And we've been praying for physical healing, perhaps it should be a relationship healing. Psalm 77, 14 tells us, You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. What a wonderful testimony, a wonderful miracle. If relationships can be healed, if there can be character change in us, through us. Again, expect a breakthrough, a miracle. T, thanks. N, need of a neighbor. X, 
expect a breakthrough, a miracle. X, I just added this, exercise, exercise. <laughs> when we are anxious and worried, we tend to be lethargic. We just lie down in bed. We don't want to do anything. In fact, that leads to more depression when we just curl up in bed in a fetal position or we just watch TV the whole day. You know what? To find joy in these desperate times, we need to be physically active. Take a walk, exercise, go out, do something, do your chores, wash the dishes, wash the house, sweep the house, be active. You can go on the internet and follow those exercise routines. Watch your diet, be healthy. You know, uh, again, this is the last IDC in January. Dr. Caroline, Caroline Tanchi Pedro gave a wonderful overview of how we can be healthy about, you know, and you know what amazed me about what she said? She said, standing up is healthier than sitting down. Can you believe that? Standing up is healthier than sitting down. Because at least standing up, you, more of your muscles are being used. And look at this in James chapter 2, verse 16. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? You know what this, this verse is telling us? Many times you say, God bless you. I'm praying for your healing. I'm praying for your, uh, that your sickness will go away. And it is a natural prayer for us when we meet friends who have concerns. But what is James 2.16 saying? When we say, I'm praying for your health, James 2.16 says, what about me? What about my physical needs? Am I exercising? When I pray for physical healing on other people, I need to ask myself, am I doing something right to my body? Or am I doing something wrong? What should I stop? What should I start? So that my body can also be healed and be strong. Philippians chapter 3 verse 1 tells us, Finally, brothers, what? Rejoice in the Lord. Why does the Apostle Paul tell us to rejoice in the Lord? He knows because we can get anxious very easily. We get worried very easily. So, Apostle Paul tells us, Finally, finally, brothers, rejoice. He gives us so many, so many advice, so many guidelines on following the, 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 the Lord. And then he says, finally, rejoice. Be joyful. Let me close with this verse. This is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. Okay. The Apostle Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, he has caused us, he has caused us to be born again because before we were dead, he has caused us to be born again to a what? Living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded guarded through faith for a what for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time in this you rejoice the apostle peter is saying you rejoice though now for a little while if necessary you have been grieved by various trials if you're going through various trials disappointments in these desperate times the promise of the Bible, this will be temporary. It is going to be for a little while. And we can what focus on the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, the living hope that we will be joining Him, okay? Look to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading. Hindi masisira, hindi mawawala, hindi malulusaw. And where is this inher inheritance? A promised inheritance for you, for me, kept in heaven. It's waiting in heaven. Who by God's power, by God's power, this inheritance is being guarded through faith. Because of our faith in the Lord, God is guarding that inheritance, waiting. Look, for a salvation 
ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. How can we find joy in this desperate time? Focus on the word of the Lord, the promise of the Lord that we can rejoice because there is an inheritance waiting for us. How? Because of what Jesus Christ did for you and for me. Let me summarize again. Joy in this desperate times. Thank the Lord. Every day, as soon as you wake up, find 10 things to thank the Lord for. When you go to sleep, find 10 things that happened during the day that you can thank the Lord for. T, thank the Lord. N, need of a neighbor. Look for somebody who needs help, who needs an encouragement. X, expect a breakthrough, a miracle in your life. And X, last, take care of your body exercise. God bless you. Big C Chats. Mm-hmm.